Go slay a Ziz Gorlin. I'm on it. See a brownie. Welcome back, Darth. Seriously, this feels kind of slow. I like how you can kind of jump off and keep running. There isn't like an animation where you have to slowly get off. Dancing one is still here. Dancing one can dance all night. This one's trust is not so easily earned. Hmm, dancing one brings brownie bushes for this one. This one can die thread once more. This one is pleased. Dancing one kills bitey buzzy one. This one hates, hates, hates bitey buzzy ones. Dancing one is kind, too kind. Many walking ones come to these one's abodes, but few are friendly like dancing one. Perhaps this one was wrong not to trust dancing one after all. This one asks Dancing One for forgiveness. These ones have not have many troubles since Walking Ones last came to our abode. This one must be careful, always careful. The Dancing One is not like other Walking Ones. This one can trust Dancing One. This one would ask Dancing One for help. Strange Walking Ones with bodies of steel come to the home of these ones. This one thinks steel ones come from Empire. When Empire goes, many living ones become dead ones. Trees fall and bushes burn. These ones' home is in danger. Danger! This one begs of Dancing One to help this one no more. Dancing One is friends with these ones and Walking Ones, yes? Dancing One must speak to these ones here and Walking Ones in Hut House and find out more. This one has bad feeling. This one fears Steel Ones are after something, but this one should speak no more. Go, Dancing One. This one depends on kindness of Dancing One. Did you guys get all that? Are you two even listening? <laughs> Strange steel walking ones. Yes, this one has seen. Steel walking ones carry big boxes. Maybe walking ones hunt for shiny treasure? This one likes treasure. Can you repeat? Yes. One, 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 one. Shush, shush, this one says. Steel walking ones are scary like touched ones. This one hates scary, and scary ones have scary friends. I wish you could cast the chocobo while moving. One is the loneliest number. Why does the music get quieter when you stop? 
I noticed that before, but I thought it was just the song. But no, it gets quieter when you stop. Kind of weird. I kind of like it, though. Have I hit this crystal? Yeah, I think I did. He was number one. Wait, parkour? Parkour? Yo, Jill Eric, David, 11 months. One more month to your full year. Thank you, man. Fearsome types clad headed to toe and steel, you say. Imperial soldiers, no doubt. I couldn't tell you what they're plotting, but I'm sure it's nothing good. Wow, that was some incredible information. So glad I talked to you. Men clad in strange armor. Why, now that you mention it, I did see some suspicious types of late. They were gathering deep in the forest. I simply assumed they were adventurers. What's this music? I'm not, I'm not doing the fate. <laughs> this one is happy to see dancing one return. What a dancing one learn. This one sees. Steel walking ones come from Empire, carry boxes and go walking deep, deep through trees. As this one thought, steel walking ones are up to nasty, no good things. This one knows forest well. Steel walking ones try to hide, but this one will find them. This one would bor borrow dancing ones map. This one makes mark right here. This is where steel ones hide. This one knows. Dancing one will go looking for steel ones, yes? person on the planet. It's not even close. It's on this map, is it not? Like it said it says it's over here. But then it doesn't show up here. Oh, there's a circle. I totally missed the circle. <laughs> what the original Japanese text is for the... They may have come up with another... Like, gimmick. I've seen that before where like in Japanese the characters will have a certain gimmick to do with like the text or however the um like the grammar or something is like goofy as like a gimmick to a character and then when they translate it to English it doesn't make sense because that grammar doesn't exist in English so then they come up with a different gimmick.
What's in the box? Oh no, not the imp noise. I've heard that in so many games at this point. Dancing one is back. This one breathed sigh of relief. This one was worried. Hmm, dancing one found something? Dancing one found paper inside a box. This is a message from Empire. This one can read walking one symbols. Message paper has the names of food and rocks. Food and rocks were inside boxes. This one knows. But this one does not understand. Food and rocks mentioned all come from home of these ones. How the steel walking ones know to find them? Is there sneaky one hiding behind this one's wings? Snooping one selling secrets to steel walking ones? This one fears for one's, one's home. But dancing one has helped this one much today. Dancing one must promise to always be friend of these ones. Is that level 30? Yeah, so I can go do another Pugilist quest. Helpful one arrives at a good time. This one needs helpful one's help. One of these unnamed, one of these ones named Claxio ventured outside Little Solace alone. Alone is unsafe. Helpful one must find Claxio. Nod. Claxio stuck west after leaving the settlement. Hurry before Claxio ends up in the belly of a beastly one. Why did we need the cutscene angle for that conversation? Oh, it's literally right here. being attacked. Oh. I guess I'm invincible. This one thought it's a likely place to build a home, but then meddling one arrives. Forces this one to go deeper into the forest. Meddling one is forbidden from following this one. Away from the meddling one. <laughs> Thank you for patiently waiting. Appreciate you. Now die. Is there a way to tell if enemies are uh, will attack you? Is that the icon next to their name? Is that what that means? It must be, right? The blue ones don't attack you. The red ones do. That makes sense. Because I figured walking by them would be okay. But it was not. That's why. Oh god, I have to go back now. What? Claxio refused to return to these ones and went deeper into the forest? But this one saw touched ones lurking in the forest. Helpful one must hurry. Hurry and find Claxio. Helpful one should search for spools of thread on the forest floor. Those things will lead helpful one to Claxio. But hurry, hurry before touched ones take Claxio away. Oh, now we're really going in deep. This might be a good time to go do my Pugilist quest, since this is kind of far away. Hmm. Nah, I'll just keep going. Eventually, I'll probably return to the town, and then I can go do the Pugilist quest. By the way, I haven't looked at my stuff in a while. Okay, I still got 
a little further to go. I said I'll wait till I go back to the main town because the main town's my home crystal. So that I can just return there when I'm done. Bats! Yo, true. I should go play some cards. Oh, that's true. I need to go to old. Yeah, but that's what I was saying. Like, if I go back to my hometown, then I can go to old Da and then just return without having to pay. What's my point? Bug. This is an enemy. A little glowfly. Time to do 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 Meddling One is back. This one told Meddling One to be gone. Tell Kamuxio that this one will never go back. Never! Touched Ones. Touched Ones should go away too. This one is good one. Everyone should just leave this one alone. Be on guard, Petra. These sylphs have been tempered, brought under the thrall of the primal Ramu. Akin to the Amalgias, tempered by Ifrit, these sylphs exist only to serve their deity. Though not answer the words, only steal. I take no pleasure in this, but it must be done. Petra's like, where have you guys been? Why are you only here now? Some more ball here. because I killed the cells. Th this one is safe? This one was so scared. Claxio! This one has been worried. So very worried. Is Claxio unharmed? Still in possession of wits? Kamuxio and meddling one as well. Why are these two here? These two came to rescue Claxio. That Claxio is safe fills this one with joy. Kamuxio, forgive this one. This one did not mean to run away from little Solace. This one was just afraid. These ones who live at Lil Solace were changing, becoming friendly with other ones. 
This one feared that these ones were forgetting who those ones are, like touched ones did. But this one was wrong. This one can see that now. Meddling, er, helpful one. This one is grateful. This one will return to little Salas to be with Camuxio and friendly ones. Well, that should see to that. Let's say we return to Little Salas as well. I, for one, could do with a nice hot bath. You're gonna steal their bath? I'm pretty sure they hate your guts. I don't think they're gonna let you use their bath. Just saying. <laughs> this is the part where we take our clothes off, right? Indeed. That is what you do when you take a bath. Called it. How did he see me? This one thought Claxio was lost forever. Helpful one saved Claxio. Now these ones can be family again. This one has known many walking ones, even many kind walking ones, but helpful one is kindest and strongest of all. Helpful one is a hero to these ones. Helpful one will bring these ones and walking ones closer together. This one knows. This one would take helpful one to see elder one. But elder one is... Elder one is... Mount speed in middle Lanasia has increased. Huh. That's cool. Spirited away. Love that movie. This one must ask Kind One's forgiveness. This one made promise to take Kind One to see Elder One, yes? But this one cannot. This one cannot because Elder One is not there. Elder One is not anywhere. Elder One went into forest yesterday, but it's not come back. This one is worried. Elder One often goes into forest, but never, never for this long. Kind One will help find Elder One, yes? Near where Elder One disappeared is the home of the walking one named Buskaran. Buskaran may know what happened to Elder One. This one would talk to Buskaran, but walking ones do not always trust these ones. Would Kind One talk to Buskaran for this one? And Kind One comes from Gridania, yes? In Gridania live many Kind Ones, yes? This one begs of Kind One. Please go to Gridania and ask fellow Kind Ones for help. Then please hurry, these ones are not safe until Elder One returns. Ah, so now you're helping- you're asking Gridania for help now that- now that your Elder is gone. A likely story. So wait, am I going to Gridania first? I guess so. Wait. I can just return. Well, if it isn't our intrepid ambassador, how fare your diplomatic efforts with the Sylph tribes? Their elders gone missing, you say? Why, if you were to end up in the hands of the Tempered Ones, we'd have a crisis on our hands. You can assure the Sylphs that my sharpest-eyed serpents will be on the lookout night and day. No stone must be left unturned. I would ask you to call upon Gia Malco at Bent Branch Meadows and deliver the message that the Wood Whalers are needed in the search effort. Bent Branch, 
Bent Branch Meadows sounds like a Spyro level. dead. You're, on a, you were reading a Reddit thread recently about the most hated video game characters and money bags was number one. What's so great about money bags too is you get to beat them up at the end of Spyro 3, I think. So you get a great conclusion. You don't just hate them and then that's it. But yeah, money bags is pretty great. A, a fantastic hate hate character. Fantastic character you're supposed to hate. Not even like necessarily a villain, although he pretty much is a villain in Spyro 3, but not even like necessarily a villain, but just a character that you hate. It's great. His, his voice always gets me. He's like pompous. Ah, it's Spyro! Fancy meeting you here. I would let you across this bridge, but unfortunately, I just seem to not have the cash. Ooh, this place is cool looking. I gotta say, I'm really liking Gridania in general. Very pretty area. And not just woods, but yeah, like the woods, and then you have like the more clear areas and the rivers. Is that a chocobo with wings? I want that. Whatever this is, I want it. Teapot? I want you, teapot. Teacup time. Oh, that's the name of. <laughs> Her name is Teacup Time. I want your chocobo. A message from Commander Halahua, you say? The Silfelder has vanished, worry not, friend. The Wood Whalers have eyes under every leaf behind every branch. If the Elder is anywhere in these forests, we shall find him. Alright. Go find him. I'll just chill.
There are so many quests, by the way. Like, literally everywhere I go, there's multiple quests. You could really just... If you were, like, just trying to explore and have fun and not even focus on the main quest, you would have so many things to do. There's just so many quests you can pick up everywhere. But I see apps... I mean, back when the game was newer it probably made more sense but now i see absolutely no reason to do any side quests because even just doing the main quests i'm on level doing the main quests and my pugilist quests and i'm on level in fact i'm like beyond level and i'm getting more rewards doing that than i would be doing like random side quests so i just see absolutely no reason to do side quests but back in the earlier days when you didn't get as much XP. It may have been more viable, but... Yeah, I just really don't see any reason. Like, there's so many main quests, too. Like... Why would you ever need to do the side quests? And then even after you're done with the main quests, wouldn't you want to go on to... raiding or... dungeons? Like, what purpose would doing side quests have? I have to imagine they would just be a slower way of doing whatever you want to do. See, I don't know if they did a very good job of making side quests, like... ...meaningful. I, I mean, because you also have, like, the levies and stuff you could do instead, so... I mean, they're here... ...just because, and if you have, like, a... ...if there's, like, a certain town that you like, like, if you really like the, uh the sylph town you could do the sylph side quest to learn a bit more about the sylph lore so that kind of makes sense but in terms of just having actual like mechanical value they seem pretty useless but if you were struggling with something like if later we start struggling on something i have no doubt that there'll be side quests everywhere that I can grab, you know, to get to where I need to be. So that's cool. Well, Med Adventurer, we have the finest grog and grub this side of... Eh? Not here to fill your belly, then. Ah, hunger for news, is it? I don't like his sleeveless shirt, but then giant gloves. Bothering me. Uh, there's been talk of a sylph lurking hereabouts, but I couldn't rightly say if it be the elder you seek. Those woodland scamps all look alike. Short of painting one red and another one blue, most folk would struggle to tell two of them apart. If you've the time, mayhap you could stay a while and see what the gods have in store. You never know, you might even stumble across this sylph elder yourself. You're not wrong, 16's side quests are... I actually really like some of 16's side quests in terms of lore. But yeah, in terms of mechanical value, they are so useless. Like, you're better off just doing... Like, I... I'm sure it's not 100% accurate, but it truly feels like if you were level 5 and you did three side quests to get to level 6, and then you did the main quest and you got to level seven, you could also back at level five, just do the main quest and probably get to level seven. Like the balance, the, the scaling of the experience was so wild that like, it almost felt like you'd just be the same level if you just went through the side, the main quests, you know? Like it was so little, it had so little value and the, the levels themselves had so little value anyways, but like, yeah, it just felt like it, it really did not matter one bit whether or not you did the side quests or not, mechanically. No word on the Silk Elder yet, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. In the meantime, how about doing a favor for old Buskaron in return? Yeah, that's fine. We don't have an Elder, like, that's potentially dying out there in the wild. Let's just help you with your stupid crap. Right then, let's put you to work. There's a customer outside who's spoiling for a fight, and I need you to cool him off for me. No need to go cracking any skulls, though. Just take his tub of cold water and douse the drunkard. Tends to do the trick. My patrons can still grog all night and carouse loud enough to wake the dead if they wish, but as soon as it turns violent, I've got to put my boot down. We 
are you guys doing here? How'd you get here? Mead soaked Midlander. What are you staring at? You want to keep them eyes in your face? Oh, hold on, I got some here. <laughs> ah, nothing of street sets gold. What do you mean, no fighting? This dusk white scum was. Yeah, yeah, I know the rules. That bastard gets to keep his skin for now. I don't think 16 has gotten a DLC announcement, has it? I haven't heard it. I wasn't I haven't been looking at the news though the last couple days. I know there were some announcements. Dude, isn't that wild? Like I I I just don't I really don't agree with the whole DLC culture right now. It's it's really bad. It's really bad. You have these games that are single player lore driven experiences and players play it when it comes out, beat it, and then they never touch it again. And then like seven months later, the developer will come out and be like, yo guys, D DLC. And everyone's like, I don't care. Like what we've moved on. We we've played so many at this point. It's been so long since I've even touched that game. Why do I care about your DLC? You know, like the 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 hardcore fans who would have bought in the DLC a month after the game came out or a year after the game came out, sure, they'll still buy it. But in terms of everyone else, like DLC has got to be in the worst spot it's ever been. Like no one cares. People move on to other games. Like there's so many games and so like with the Game Pass mentality now and how many games people go through like there's just no shot that the casual audience cares at all about dlc like i would love to see the sales numbers of like the forbidden west dlc the amount of people that bought horizon forbidden west and played it versus the amount of people that bought the dlc i'd be genuinely interested and that came out pretty quickly that came out a few months after forbidden west like that was that was not super long, but not super quick either, somewhere in the middle. But I mean, man, like it's insane how long sometimes they're willing to wait to finally be like, okay, here you go. And the whole mentality of like the game sucks, but the DLC will fix it, but the DLC takes so long to come out, what does it matter? Like freaking uh, Stranger of Paradise. Stranger of Paradise, the DLC actually had some really cool boss fights and kind of fixed some of the issues with the equipment. But I know very little people that played the Stranger of Paradise DLC. Like most people played Stranger of Paradise and were either finished playing it before even completing it. <laughs> or completed it and then never touched it again. Like, that DLC, there's no shot. It was, like, a resounding success for them. Oh no, for sure, but that's the problem, is, like, it's, it's too long. They need to put more of that content in the base game, or just not not release a game before the DLC is even, like, or I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, but like I just think DLC takes too long to come out in today's in today's world where people just move on from games right after beating them. Like, you know, we're not back in middle school where you'd play through your games like nine times, you know, like because you had nothing else to play. Like nowadays, there's so many games to play and there's so many free games and there's so many service games and there's so many, you know, games like that that people just don't play through story driven games more than once or return to them consistently you know like it's most lore games or first or one player games or whatever are kind of one and done so at least in the casual space and like sure 
if Elden Ring DLC comes out, you could say that's an excuse for people to go back and play Elden Ring. Like, Elden Ring's been out long enough now that everyone's kind of, like, willing to go back to it. But, man, how long is that? When did Elden Ring come out? <laughs> and there's still no DLC? There was that update. But, like, imagine if they do an Elden Ring DLC, people are going to be like, what's that? It was so long ago. I mean, I'm trying to remember back when DLC was first kind of implemented, how long it took. I want to say it was like two months tops. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I do not remember it taking this long. I'm not assuming it's a problem. I think it's a problem. I'm not assuming anything. I, I don't think many people buy DLC nowadays for single player games. I don't. Like I said, I would like to see the sales numbers of, like, Forbidden West DLC. Because, like, it just seems like it takes too long. And, it, it like, games themselves, like you said, games themselves take too long to come out. Like, we're, we're in a position now where games take so long to come out, and then when they finally come out, they're still not done. And then the company's like, oh, well, the DLC will fix it, and then the DLC itself takes six months to come out. Like, I don't want to wait that long. Maybe companies should be focusing on smaller games. And either finishing their big games before they release them, or just not making their games so massive. And that's honestly what I think. I'll be completely honest. I think they should make games smaller. I really do. I, I honestly think... If if we're if we're heading towards the future where games are going to take three years to develop, and that's I mean games already take more than three years sometimes, but if every game takes three years to develop, and they're all going to be eighty dollars with forty dollars of DLC, that takes another eight months to complete. I would rather a thirty-hour game for sixty bucks. You know what I mean? Like, bring me back to 30 hour experiences that are 60 bucks. I would much prefer that than waiting that long for a game just for it to be incomplete. Sure, it has 80 hours of content, but it's not complete content. It's buggy or it's unfinished, unpolished, whatever. And then the DLC comes along to fix that, but it takes another eight months to get that. Like, it's just not worth it. It's not worth that. And, and I, I watched some video recently about how games are taking so long to make now that no company is making money. Like, companies are losing so much money on these games because of how long they take. I mean, just imagine how long a game, how expensive it is to make a game that takes five years in development. Thinking about all the people you're paying hourly. Like, it's insane. It can't be better for them. It can't be better for them to make a game that takes five years. But for them, it's more of the prestige of having the next big AAA title, right? But I, I just think there's a, there's a point where we got to be like, either press pause on the big projects and do some smaller projects or quit the big projects altogether. And some of these companies, like I said, like Bethesda, they're known for their big, huge experiences. And so if they don't make Elder Scrolls 7, they're not going to feel like Bethesda anymore. But man, I like there's just if it takes them that long to make it and it's not even really finished, it can't be worth it. You know, like the, it just can't be worth it. This, this slow build of like games having to get bigger and bigger and cost more and cost more and cost more. Like it's got to reach some natural conclusion. Where, you know, they're going to have to stop and reconsider. And, I, and I've made the argument for a while that games are getting to the point where they're quote unquote too big where people just don't really want a game to be that big. 
I heard some people complain about that with um, Elden Ring. I heard some people complain about that with uh, Breath of the Wild, where it was just too much. It was too massive. You know, especially for the casual market, like there's just too much to do. Um... And I'm, I mean, I don't know if, if I'm there yet, but I do think that Elden Ring was kind of too big in a way. Um, like, it, with Elden Ring, it was more of an issue of big areas with nothing to do. That was more the issue with Elden Ring, not the actual scope. Um, Elden Ring could have done with some smaller area, like, Take the entirety of Elden Ring and just, like, crunch it a little bit. That would have been better. But, um... And, and also, Elden Ring had a ton of copied assets. and Well, not assets, but a, a ton of copied bosses, mostly. Where you would go through a dungeon and just fight the same boss you fought in a previous dungeon. Which is, like, it, not inherently bad. But when the game is already massive, and then on top of that, you're repeating bosses, you just get the feeling of like, well, why was this dungeon here then? Like, we could have just done without this dungeon, right? So, it, it was more of an issue of like, the design, not the actual girth of the game. But, like, like I said, when I went to GameStop that other day, that dude was complaining about Elden Ring, and he was like, you know... I just didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. There was just too much to do, which like... Sounds silly for us, but for a casual player who doesn't play a lot of video games, I could see that being an issue. I could see walking onto that first field and just being like, what do I do? You know? So, but that's more of like, I've never really thought that that was a valid argument. If you don't play video games a lot, then you shouldn't be the person making overarching statements about what video games should be. Having said that, that's the way companies think. They want the they want the casual market to enjoy their game, and that's why a lot of games are very heavy-handed with tutorials and hand-holding, because they want the casual market to enjoy it. But I've always felt like if you are a casual player and you admit to yourself that you're a casual player, then you shouldn't be one you shouldn't be someone on Twitter saying like Elden Ring is too big. You know what I mean? Like that's you're not someone that plays video games a lot. Your your opinion is is certainly valid, but you shouldn't be like, you know, arguing with people and saying no, I'm right. You can have that opinion. You can be like, hey, I, I felt like I, as a casual player, I felt like Elden Ring was too big. Like that's totally valid. But to be someone that's like, I want all games to be smaller and blah blah blah. And Elden Ring sucks, and you know, like that's taking it a bit far, but. But no, like, I, I, I've made this argument for a while. I think that games are getting to the point where they're just a bit too big. Like, they, they, like, I think Elden Ring definitely outstayed its welcome when I was trying to, like, quote unquote, do everything. It just felt like at some point I just wanted to beat the final boss and be done with it. And to be fair, I did a challenge run afterwards and I really enjoyed that. But in terms of my first casual playthrough, I got to the point where I was like, ah, I just kind of want the game to end. Like, I'm just going around doing dungeons and fighting the same bosses. I haven't gotten anything that's worthwhile in like five hours. Like, my equipment is the same as it was five hours ago. And I just kind of want to go beat the final boss. So. But. Elden Ring might not be the best example. But I think as we continue, it's... If they continue to make games bigger and bigger and bigger, we will definitely get to a point where the vast majority of people are like, yeah, this is not something I want 100% or not something I really want to play through. If games get too much bigger than like Elden Ring or uh, Zelda, people are going to be like, yeah, it's, I'm good. I'm going to go back to my Fortnite. I'm going to go back to my Apex Legends. I'm going to go back to my Final Fantasy XIV. Like, like, those are the games that have infinite playability. I wanted to play this game for a nice 80-hour distraction from that game. I don't want to be playing this game for 200 hours, you know? <laughs> I 
and maybe length isn't a good maybe saying it for length isn't like the right idea more of just how big the world is because you know persona 5 is like a 200 hour game and most people enjoy the fact that it's that long but yeah because they want it to be more and more than or worth the money rather so but you know my, my point is in terms of big games is it worth it if we look at a game like elden ring is it worth it to spend an extra two years making elden ring even bigger than it was like if, if you had the option like we could have elden ring now for 70 bucks or we could wait another two years and you get elden ring but an even bigger map and it's 80 bucks like would that be worth it for you would it be worth it for the developer like i don't think so I, i'm at that point a very small fraction of people are actually finishing the game right at that point a very small fraction of the people that start Elden Ring are actually getting to the credits. And you're wasting all of that dev time. At that point, you could be releasing Elden Ring and starting on Elden Ring 2. You know what I mean? With that dev time, you could cut that in half, make Elden Ring half the size it is, and start working on Elden Ring 2. You know? It's like it can't be worth it for the developers to spend that much time making the game. But in the same token, you don't want them to release incomplete games either. And I've played a good amount of games where it feels like instead of this game being so big, it could have been smaller, but optimized better. And it could have taken the same amount of dev time, you know? So yeah, I do, I do hope that, I do hope that they kind of realize that. I think Starfield had a lot of that issue too. People were saying like Starfield, they could have made this smaller and more optimized and less glitchy and more potent content instead of just being big. And it probably would have taken them less time and it would have made more money. And it would have cost less money. And that's, that's a lot of the issue I have with the $70 price tag, because I think $70 is totally reasonable for a video game. We were talking about this a couple days ago, <coughs> but like, you go to the movies for what, 15 bucks now? To see a movie that's an hour and a half long, and that's it? And you spend $30 on the snacks, so, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's more like $30. But, you know, versus you get a 70 80 hour experience where you're seeing it hearing it playing it experiencing it you know for 70 dollars like honestly as an entertainment thing i think i still think video games are kind of a steal when i when i think about some of the other things i do for entertainment you know go golfing at a nice golf course you're looking at maybe you get three rounds before you're spending the amount of money that you are for a video game so three rounds of golf versus an 80 hour musical video, you know, interactive experience like or even go into like the the arcade for a few hours. You could spend 70 bucks in an arcade pretty quickly. So I still think in terms of entertainment, video games are kind of a steal. But my issue with the $70 price tag is that uh, these companies continue to make games that their argument for it being $70 is that video games are getting more and more expensive to make and I just feel like they could be spending less. They don't need to make the next game Elden Ring 2. It does not have to be a 200 hour experience with a map that's 10 times the size of GTA 5 and you know 
more dialogue than freaking the Bible and you know what I mean? Like they don't have to be these super massive crazy things. People are okay spending $70 for a 40 hour game if it's really good. 100%. So, but you know, some of these companies just have the, the mentality of like, oh, we're Bethesda. We're known for making Skyrim. So all of our games have to be Skyrim. All of our games have to be Skyrim level of of grandiose, you know? And then that's their argument for making the game $70. And I just think, you know, we could be making smaller games for cheaper, still charging $70, in my opinion. You could still charge $70, but you could make a much smaller, more optimal experience that is way more polished and everyone would win. And you might actually be able to make the DLC within the year that you release the game, you know? <laughs> Instead of it being two years later that you get the DLC for the game. And like, I think Square Enix is really good at that, by the way. Square Enix always has these side projects going on. It takes them seven years to make Kingdom Hearts, and it takes them five years to make Final Fantasy, but they always got these small things going on. They always got these little projects going on that, you know, whether it be there are a million mobile games or you have Stranger of Paradise or you have Type Zero or you have Nier or you have, they, they publish so many different games, but even, they even develop a bunch of random things too. So like, I think Square Enix does a pretty good job of like having these smaller projects help to fund the bigger projects. Because if you're someone like Bethesda who puts all of their stock into like Starfield and then it bombs, which Starfield didn't really bomb that much, but you know, you put all your stock into something like that and then it bombs, it like destroys your company. Like you're behind, you're, you know, it's such a huge thing, such a huge blow to the company. So, yeah, I think that, I think the Square does a much better job of you know, having many different projects and spreading out their assets instead of throwing it all into this one project that takes 10 years to develop. And it's just weird, because, like, they continue to do it, and it just seems like all they ever do is lose money, and they just continue to do it. Who knows, maybe all of the brand deals and everything they get over all those years ends up panning out. You know, I used to hate planned DLC because that's kind of like against the idea of DLC. DLC, you should release the game, see what's wrong with the game, or see what people want more of the game, and then make the DLC to specifically design it towards what people want. But nowadays, game development takes so long, I don't know if I want that anymore. Because I'm not going to see it for the next year and a half. <laughs> and at that point, I'm not going to care. I mean, certain games I will, of course. Final Fantasy 16, if the DLC comes out three years from now, I'm still going to play it. But for other games, like, you know, I'm not necessarily going to boot up Elden Ring the day the DLC drops. I might wait and see, and if people say it's amazing, I'll go back and play it, but I'm not necessarily going to be like, you know, oh my god, the Elden Ring DLC is coming out. Let's go. Like, it's been so long. I almost feel like I have to brush up on the main game again before I play the DLC. Not even going to remember the story. Granted, I didn't understand Elden Ring's story anyways, but <laughs> that's beside the point. Nicely done, Petra. I'll not have my patrons picking fights with each other over a bit of petty prejudice. In case you didn't see, the bloke who caught the brunt of the outburst is Dusk White Elizin. There are people who shun cities to live in the wilds, making them no better than brigands in the eyes of many. To be fair, the Dusk Whites can be an unruly lot, but they ain't so bad once you get to know them. And it don't seem right to bar a whole race of people from the Druthers for the misdeeds of a few. There should be at least one place where anyone willing to pay the coin and drink in peace is welcome, don't you think? Sure. Whatever you say, Buscarin.
say Elden Ring three times and Trev shows up. Honestly, it's kind of hard to say what DLC is planned and what DLC isn't planned because you don't always know exactly the back end, but it is definitely a difference between way back in the day when DLC used to be made, like there were some games where they didn't even plan DLC and then the game sold so well that they were like, all right, let's do DLC versus now when it's like Destiny 2 comes out and they're like, we have the entire, they'll actually say publicly like, here's the game and here's our plan for DLC. Call of Duty does that the same way. Before the game even comes out, they say, we're gonna have DLC in August, we're gonna have DLC in December, and these are gonna be the themes, and then maybe they'll make some changes, but like they have it all planned out. It's actually like part of this the the sell the um the sales tactic is that they say we're gonna have DLC here, 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 and here, you know? So anyways, be back in a second. Yeah, fighting games do that a lot too, especially with their characters, although that's just kind of that makes sense both from a fighting game perspective and also like a meta perspective is that they always have their fighters planned out. 